This is the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, celebrating 76 years of providing Tennesseans with high-quality health coverage at an affordable rate. Visit FBHP.com to learn about their history in Tennessee. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, winding to the end of the preseason. Does it feel to you as if this preseason has gone in like hyperspeed. Hyperspeed. It feels like we just started training camp and we were all just, yeah, football's back. And I still very much feel like, yeah, football's back. I'm not training camp tired. And I can't believe that now we're just running right into the regular season. So training camp is over. The Titans will play preseason game number three Friday night at Nissan Stadium. Woohoo! Seven fifteen Central Time kickoff, six o'clock air time on Titans Radio. Any of the great Titans radio stations in your area, uh, you're back on Titans Countdown this week. I'm gonna be in the booth. I'm so excited. Yeah, that's really why I'm so fired up. I think I'm excited to be at the stadium for a game. Not watching on TV, listening to Titans Radio, actually participating in Titans Radio. I'm excited to be back. Do you and Rhett and Coach Mack have a good pregame show planned? I think we have a pretty solid pregame show pack or uh, planned. Pregame show planned. Yes. Um, it's packed full of stuff. Good. There's going to be a lot of different, a lot of different stories that are being told. We have a ton to talk about with Coach Mack, of course. Um, it's going to be a pretty pretty legit show, and it's a little bit longer, so you get a little more bang for your buck, which we also like. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, Date-wise, of course, Friday night is the final preseason game. Yes. The weekend is kind of calm. Uh, Monday, the team gets back to work to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. And then um, the cuts – will be taking place on Monday and Tuesday, maybe even some over the weekend, because you have to be down to 53 players on Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Yes. Central time. Yes. All right, so here are a couple important notes to understand. If you are going to put a player on injured reserve with the ability to return, that player must be on your initial 53 at 3 o'clock on Tuesday, or else if they're put on IR now, they're out for the year. Okay. So they have to be on that initial 53, and then once that clears, then you're able to move them to the eligible to return list. They could return as soon as four games. That's a very good clarification to make, Mike. Thank you. The next day, you're able to start signing players to the practice squad. Practice squad, 16 players. Six of those may be vested veterans. One note that we think that you need to know is there's been a lot of talk about tight end Thomas Otakoya. And Thomas has improved dramatically from a year ago. His blocking has been excellent. If Thomas Otakoya ends up on the practice squad, he does not count against the 16. He is an extra based on the fact that he is an international player. Okay, and each team is allowed one. I, I think that's right, but okay. I don't know that I don't know that part. I don't know that every team has an international player. Right, uh, but I think you are allocated a spot for okay. one. Yes, so you yes. can do that. So you would think that, you know, that may be something that they choose to utilize and or he could make the 53. Right. Who knows? It's exciting. It is exciting. The Titans first game is Sunday, September 10th at New Orleans at noon central time. The Titans will then play home for the Chargers September 17 at Cleveland, September 24, Cincinnati, October 1. At Indianapolis, October 8. Maybe Jonathan Taylor's not there anymore. Fingers crossed. Maybe. <laughs> and then Baltimore in London, 8.30 a.m. Central Time on Sunday, October the 15th. 
NFL meetings take place the following Tuesday and Wednesday, October 17 and 18 in New York City. The Titans obviously have a bye the weekend after London, the weekend of October 22. October the 29th, the Titans play the Falcons at Nissan Stadium. That's one of the games where the Titans will wear the Oilers uniforms. Yes. And then Halloween, 3 o'clock Central Time, that is the trade deadline. That is also the day before the Titans will leave for Pittsburgh to play Thursday night football against the Steelers on Thursday, November the 2nd. So those are just a few dates to just keep in mind. That's where we're headed. That is where we are headed at this point. Man, that's going to be. There is there is much to come. There is. But one way to prepare, Duncan. Ah, see, I was going to try and guess, and I didn't want to be wrong. It's always game on with Duncan, <laughs> so grab a coffee and kick <laughs> off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or figuring out the roster or watching the game on TV. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time. That's why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. Okay. So you get to keep 53. You sure do. Yes. I have played the game. Oh, Mike. I have played the game about how many roster spots I'm sure of. Going into Friday night's preseason game. How many roster spots are How you How many sure players of? that I am sure that will be on the roster? Okay, what's that number? 38. 38. Yes. Now, I know several more guys will be on the roster, but if you ask me, am I 100% sure? No. About other people other than those 38. The 38. So you've got 38 100% positive. Well, you've got a couple more probably. I mean, I've got probably a dozen probably. Okay. I'm like Coach Mack that he said on the Monday edition of the OTP. I think they probably have three or four roster spots legitimately available, maybe. Okay. Is that encouraging to you that a lot of it seems as though a lot of these people are already in the building? It's encouraging, but it's also encouraging to me about the overall hunger of this thing right now. Because at this time a year ago, I probably would have had five more guys that I was sure about. Positively sure. Okay. The, here's the thing. And I tried to take it from this standpoint. Am I, you know, DeAndre Hopkins is going to be on the roster. Correct. Correct. That, I mean, that's not a... That's not up for debate. No. That is a statement of... Fact. Ryan Tannehill's going to be on the roster. Correct. Derrick Henry's going to be on the roster. Chigakaku is going to be on the roster. I mean, these are not outlandish statements of not meant to be, oh, man, that's a revelation. So you, you don't know. have a bunch of hot takes on there. I have no hot takes. <laughs> I actually eliminated... This is the coldest roster. <laughs> this is, I, I actually eliminated some guys that I might have hot takes from. As a matter of fact, I mean, I'm not sure that the new kicker, Michael Badgley, will be on the roster. But I know a kicker will be on the roster. So I included that in the number. Okay, so you went with the position, not the I've got name. Eight, 18 offense, 17 defense, and three specialists. Okay. So, Balanced? Well, I mean, that that's, you know, that's – not a lot. And that's no. thinking, I, I believe there are three quarterbacks on this roster. I agree with that. I, yes. I mean, we've talked about that consistently. I just, you know, they just drafted Will Levis in the second round. Jim White said it earlier this spring, and it sort of caused a hubbub when he said he knows Will Levis is going to be on the roster. It's like they just traded up to take him with the second pick in the second round. He's going to be on the roster. Right. You know, I mean, but yeah, I, I don't think that is that is breaking news. I think that's what you would do. With right. A, well, with and, your second round. And draft Malik pick. Willis has done a nice job. Um, I feel like he's going to be on the roster. That mm -hmm. to me, uh, you know, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe I'm wrong about some of these. Yeah, I, I, I think the quarterback thing seems to be a pretty sure bet. Feels that way to me. Yeah, that the Tennessee but, Titans. Will but here's have one where I was stuck. Which of the backup offensive linemen do they keep? <sighs> yeah, because that's... I mean, here here's Nicholas Petit Frere, 
he's not going to be on the opening day roster. Correct. He, he goes to the suspended list, so he doesn't count. Maybe Dylan Radins could come off of PUP, and maybe he's one of the nine offensive linemen. But as we record this edition of the OTP, he's still on the PUP. Yeah. So we don't know. You know, those are the sorts of things. I have five wide receivers, three tight ends, the starting five offensive linemen, three quarterbacks, and two tailbacks. Can I ask a procedural question? Sure. How does PUP calculate into your final, your roster calculation? Okay, you would stay on physically unable to perform. You would just stay on that list. Does that count against the 53? It does not count against the 53. And you can come off of it, but then you have to create a spot for him. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, I mean, they're obviously going to keep more than five offensive linemen. Yes. But who are the rest of the guys? (sighs) Do they keep Xavier Newman and Corey Levin and Justin Murray and Adam Rupsich or Jordan Ruse or Jalen Duncan? or I mean, part of this has to do with what your makeup is going to be. And part of that has to do with health. Yeah. And yeah. Because what if you have a center who gets dinged up and you think he could be back in a week or two but yeah. then you need to keep two centers available in case he can't play in those first couple of games. You know, th- those are the things that kind of factor in right now. It's why looking at the wide receivers is such a big deal because do Burks and Phillips get back for week one? And if, if it's not week one, if it's week two, that's very different than week six. Oh, huge. And – that completely changes the the way the scales balance. Well, and here's another way. If you're on the roster in week one and you are a vested veteran, then as a vested veteran, you are entitled to your entire salary for that particular year. So there's a bit of a money game. Oh, there's totally a money game. And let's say, let's say that you're a talented young player who was drafted later was an undrafted, and the team wants to put you on practice squad, but they know they will have to expose you to waivers. And that's a dangerous game in and of itself. Yeah, the LeGarrette Blunt, Jack Doyle stories. Yeah. So here's the, here's the thing. Do you keep a player like that on the active roster in week one with the idea that they, their salary is not guaranteed for the year and that in week two or week three – you can put them on waivers. Teams will already have full practice squads. And that you can then re-sign them to your practice squad because everybody is not looking for a practice squad at that time as they will be from August 29th into August 30th next week. Right. So do you hold on to that guy in shaping this roster and say, we don't want to lose him? Yeah. But... But, but you also have to play to win the game. But you got to play to win the game. But you, you're thinking, this guy may not help us at New Orleans, but we do not want to expose him to waivers at this point because we don't think we can get him back through. And we think he has upside. We want to get him through to the practice squad at some point. But we think if we do it now, we have a problem. You have to be really healthy in order to do that. Yeah, and and I think that's where <laughs> I think that's where I start to panic <laughs> is wh- it's the health factor and sure. I think that the Titans specifically have seen this movie now twice where you try to build obviously the best roster that you can possibly build. But you've got to think about depth and you've got to think about the financial aspects of what happens when you need to start bringing in more people. And you have to start thinking about it. You're playing the short game and you're also playing an incredibly long game at the same exact time. Well, but you can't take a guy. I mean, the LeGarrette Blunt situation is a great example. Running back comes in here clearly is NFL worthy. They want to keep him desperately. 
he has earned a spot on the roster, but they don't have enough healthy linebackers to play in the game. Yeah. Because you got to cover kicks. You've got – so they they get Patrick Bailey and Tim Shaw mm-hmm. and end up waving LeGarrette Blunt, thinking we can get him back for practice squad or thinking, dear Lord, please let him get through – so he can get back to us. He doesn't. Tampa claims him. Right. And he goes on and he has a very nice career. Mm-hmm. Again, if you're not desperate, then you could do that. If the team had been okay health-wise at all spots, I mean, if you have one injury, it's one thing. But if you have a couple of injuries at a spot, do you do, you do that? <sighs> Mike, I, I wish people could see because I think you can actually see smoke coming out of my ears. Well, this is... We try not to do too many of these, which is sort of that inside baseball version of the OTP. But I think we're at the point now where if you're listening to the official Titans podcast, understanding all of the dynamics, because we've all had all of these players that I mean, the Titans have they had a good training camp. Mm-hmm. They had two very solid preseason games. There have been lots of young guys that, you know, have done a good job. Right. And you're thinking, we're going to keep this guy, and we're going to keep this guy, and we're going to keep this guy. And if you keep three quarterbacks, which everybody seems to think they'll do, then you're losing a roster spot somewhere. Yeah. Either you go 26 offensive players, 24 defensive players, and three specialists, or you go 25, 25, and three. Hmm. And remember this. The third quarterback doesn't come out of your 48 on game day. No. Which is good. Mm -hmm. But the other two guys have to be unavailable for that player to go in the game. And the third quarterback has to be on your active roster. You cannot call him up from the practice squad right before the game. Oh. So you have to have three active quarterbacks. Now, you can call a quarterback up from the practice squad to be the second quarterback. You can do that. But to be the The emergency quarterback, the only way you can do that is if that player is on your active roster, which it makes sense to do if, like the Titans, you have three suitable candidates. That is a caveat that I didn't... Well, there are a lot of caveats that make, you know... Somebody has to be on on the initial fifty three to be put on the IR, able to be returned. Uh, what how you get through to the practice squad? The salaries being guaranteed, because the last thing you want is to have a somebody get a salary that's guaranteed, and you realize you don't need them in week three, yeah. or you bring in a guy, and you bring in a guy in week two or week three. And then he's going to play for you for five or six weeks. And so then you're just paying him week to week because it all adds up. And part of the issue that the Titans had a year ago is they had extra money set aside for the season, which John Robinson always did. Right. That money was gone. (laughs) That money was gone by the time we got to November because they'd had so many injuries and had to sign so many players. Right. And so, I mean, I guess that's the that's the long game that you have to think about is, okay, so what happens if, worst case scenario, we have another situation where you're needing to add people every week. Right. Um, but at the same time, you want the best players on your team. You do. You want to make sure that you have plenty of depth. You do. You want, like, I mean, how many times have I walked into your office and been like, this guy makes the team? And it's like, okay, who then, who right, doesn't? Right, right. And that's the, uh, that's the constant balancing act. That's what makes this time of year so fun, but also just so, uh, I mean, crazy because there are so many different elements that can go into whether or not a guy makes a team that almost have nothing to do with on-field performance. If you have a bunch of guys who are all performing pretty well, you can't keep them all. You, you can't. just cannot keep every single player. And that's what makes this so frustrating. Well, I think part of the gamble going forward has to be, you're talking about short game and long game. Part of the gamble has to be is what is the roster that is going to give you the best chance to beat New Orleans? 
because that's the first thing you do. Right. But from there, it's like I, I have them right now with eight defensive backs on the roster. Okay. That's a lot. It is a lot. Considering that you've got all these young guys who've played so well, and you're saying, well, I mean, if, if that's the case, you're only keeping two, maybe three of them. Yeah. And if you only keep three of them, or if you do keep three of them, that means you can't keep as many inside linebackers. You need inside Or as linebackers. many outside linebackers. You need those Or two. as many defensive linemen. I mean, you've got to pick a spot. It's the beauty of rosters. It's the beauty of salary cap. It's because nobody, nobody in the NFL will have proper depth at every position. Because you can't. You can't. You physically cannot do it. But do you gamble and say it would be harder for us to find defensive backs later and keep three of these young guys than it is to find find one later? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, then you have to play the game. Do we have a better shot at finding a linebacker if we need it? Probably so. Do we have a better shot at finding a, an edge rusher or I don't know, a I, defensive I, lineman? I don't know about a, an edge rusher. I mean, a defensive lineman, yes. Yeah, they've, it's, they've done that. Yeah, So it's, uh, but it's that game. And, and the other thing, too, is some of these veterans in all 32 camps will leave and will know that they're gone, and, and all they know they're doing is going home for a week. Right. Because it's like, hey – if something doesn't happen, we're going to call you on September the 11th and get you to come back because then we'll 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 have you join the team. And they and they know how the game works. The agents know how the game works. Well, and that's a whole other aspect of this is while the Tennessee Titans are sitting making these complicated decisions about players who are very capable of playing in the National Football League mm-hmm. or who have already proven that they are able to play at this level and still are going to not be a part of this team for whatever reason. All 31 other teams are doing the same, same exact thing. thing. So all of a sudden, beyond all of these decisions that you're making, you know that there's about to be just a monsoon of available talent and humans that's about to well, you're about to have access to. And even if you love a bunch of these guys, Could what you if you love someone more? What if yeah. I mean, what if you love someone more? And then there's that. Set them free. Free free. Set them free. <laughs> no. That was, was a song. I'm sorry. I figured. Mm-hmm. I don't know it, but I'm sure I'm sure it's a good song. <laughs> Sting was involved. Oh, I like Sting. Uh, yes. Um and, and here's what's interesting, too, about the, the veterans who won't be on a roster in week one. Mm-hmm. So they're saying, oh, yeah, terrible. I don't have a job, but I'm going to get a call. Well, if a team has a real problem, let's say they have two safeties go down and you're a safety. Well, they don't have to guarantee your salary for you know the, the rest of the season if you're not on the roster in week one. But... If they desperately need a safety, your agent can probably get them to guarantee it. And, oh, by the way, you might get a little extra money because maybe they need you so badly they don't want you to go somewhere else. Right. I mean, right. So, so those guys, by sitting out a week, can end up with leverage seeing their three teams who desperately need a safety now, who's going to give me the best deal? Yep, you get to pick where you go. Holy smokes, Mike. Yeah. This is what makes this game so fun. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really, it's there's so many moving parts. There's so many things to take into consideration. There are so many different elements that go into the construction of an NFL roster. And yes. it's crazy. It is crazy. Huh. You know what's not crazy? What? Seat geek. <laughs> oh. I love this seat geek. Now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. I've got this app. I used the app this week. You did? I did. It's very easy. Oh. The deal is finalized. Seat geek is the newest member of the Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot more this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, seat geek is the place to do it. Seat geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So 
Titans fans can fan. Yes. What did you do? Did you go to a concert? Did you go to a show? Did you do something fun? No. Uh, oh. I'm, someone is able to use my tickets for Friday night and oh, excited. Oh, yes. And so... Exci- sending friends to the game. Sending friends to the game. Um, Michael Badgley is back here. Yes. And the, the Michael Badgley story is uh, one of the more interesting ones. Um, he was on the team for the season opener against Arizona in 2021. Yes. Do you remember how this went down? Um, I remember it being a story. I don't remember the details of the story. All right, so we'd been through the season of kickers, 2019. Yes. We went through a season with Steven Gaskowski. Yes. And Sam Sloman. Oh, good job, Sloman. Good job, Sloman. Great job, Sloman. Great job, Sloman. That was it, yes. And so that was 2020. Yeah. And so the Titans decide that they are going to get settled at kicker, and they settle on Sam Ficken. Yes. Sam Ficken is going to be the kicker. Friday in practice, before the Arizona game, Sam Ficken pulls a groin muscle. Yes. Which, as a kicker... Not good. It's not good. Nope. He's out. And Jim Wyatt and I were standing there and we're watching practice and he hit a ball and it was as if he kicked the ground. It didn't look right. It's like, wow, that's weird. And then he he may have kicked one more, but he was like, not right. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, he has a groin injury. So they pick up the phone and they call Michael Badgley. He gets in here the next day, kicks against Arizona, misses a field goal, misses an extra point. And they ended up cutting him and signing Randy Bullock to the practice squad. Then Randy Bullock was elevated for the game at Seattle, and he wins the game at Seattle with a field goal. Yes. In overtime. Yep, I remember that. So Michael Badgley leaves, and we see him again later that year in Indianapolis. He kicked well for the Colts. They decided not to re-sign him. The Bears bring him in for one game, and he does okay. And then, then he's gone. And then he ends up in Detroit, and he kicks for them for 12 games, and he does okay, pretty well. Mm-hmm. And Detroit decides not to bring him back to camp on July the 20th of this year. So he goes to Washington, and he's sort of competing with Joey Sly, but he only appeared in one game. It sounds like they wanted Sly to be the guy. And um, so Sly wins the job. And Michael Badgley is waived on August the 20th. So he's waived on Sunday. Yes. Titans sign him on Tuesday. We're watching practice before they hold that blue and white scrimmage. Right. And there is a new number six who does not look like Caleb Shudak. They have different body types. Well, he's considerably bigger. Caleb yes. Shudak is 5'6 or 5'7". And a tall day. Yeah, yeah. Badgley is close to six feet tall, so we're like, okay, it's not the same guy. They also cut Trey Wolf. Yep. So Badgley has a chance to win the job right now. And, he, you know, he'll get some time. Mm-hmm. The, the nice thing for Badgley is he will get the next few days to see if he can prove it. They would love for him to prove it. Uh, and we'll see. The, the interesting thing about Badgley is he has not kicked off regularly since his rookie year. That has not been something he has done. What, what do you mean? I mean? He's not kicked off regularly oh, since his rookie year. Oh, regularly, like consistently? No. Okay. He hasn't been used as a kickoff yes. man regularly since okay. his rookie year. I thought you meant like his motion was irregular somehow. No. Okay. I'm there with I'm. I'm so has he improved in this area? Does he do something with his kickoffs? Do the Titans want to cover kickoffs this year? Right. And can he kick the high directional kick? And the way we saw him cover kicks in Minnesota, maybe that's the case. We'll see. This is very interesting. Yeah. The (laughs) the, uh, the, the kicker chronicles for the Tennessee Titans. The kicker chronicles. Have really been been something over the last couple of years. Well, Bullock was... um, not consistent from long range. Right. That is something that has plagued Badgley earlier in his career, but he has gotten better. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has been making more long field goals in his last couple years. Interesting note, 
he does have a career long of 59 yards. That's good. So he's made a 59 yarder in his career. So it's not a matter of him not having the leg. It's just, it's consistently having the yes. leg. He has made 94 of 115 field goal attempts. What's the percentage on that? 94 of 115 is 83, I think, somewhere in that vicinity. Somebody check that math. That seems right. That's pretty good for off the top of your head. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, thanks. Yep. You're and good and that's, and here's the thing that's average in the NFL. Really? 83% is average. 83, 84% is average. Well, I mean, you think about it. They're professional kickers. Yeah, I guess that's true. They ought to make it, it, 84%. Yeah, I mean, uh, it just it seems like there's a little bit of a murmur with that. Like, where's the drama? Well, and I mean, if this had been 30 years ago, a kicker may, making 84% of his field goals would have been in the MVP voting. Yeah. But today, you know, it's just... Standard. It's standard. Bigger, faster, stronger, more accurate. Well, you have you have these athletes who have grown up specializing in this. They have a specialized holder. They have a specialized snapper. It no longer are the backup quarterbacks or a wide receiver serving as their holder. Right. I mean, it's just a thing. Yeah. And, I mean, and, uh, we've had some good ones over the years. Yes. Phew. Let's get back to that. But we've had too many of them in recent years telling you kickers are like oxygen you don't know you need it until you don't have it wow it's true put that on a t-shirt open <laughs> it's just you, it's something you don't even think Does that about come out of the snickers hot seat is that <laughs> i guess uh, do i get snickers for you that absolutely i'm get taking a snickers one for that but i mean you don't you, it, you don't even think about it doesn't even cross your mind until you don't have one and then it's like the world is ending blammo yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so Amy Wells is back on Titans Countdown Friday night, 6 Central on Titans Radio before Tennessee, New England from Nissan Stadium at 7.15. So excited. Good. Back in a stadium. We're, we're glad you're going to be back. It's going to be great. There's flag football at halftime. Is there? Yes. Oh, man. This Those just kids. keeps getting better. I love it when the kids play. That was pretty neat, them playing in Minnesota at halftime mm-hmm. on the field. That was pretty exciting. I love it when they do that mm-hmm. stuff. That's one of my favorite things. And uh, we want to say something, too, before we, uh, before we leave about Caleb Farley and, and him losing his dad and that tragic explosion in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina. Uh, we got to know his dad a little bit. Mm-hmm. And what a class act. And uh, for Caleb and for his family, we are you know, just beyond sorry. I yeah. mean, it's just a, a tragedy that you can't even begin to consider. Um, to see Caleb handle that the way that he did, I think makes people understand some of the character that he has, which is why the Titans know, even though the beginning to his on-field career has been rocky, um, that he's going to keep battling and he's going to keep fighting for it because he's he's got that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's a human worth investing in because he's just. Uh, I mean, the stuff that you dream of when it comes to a guy with grit and dedication and just a good heart. He's a good person, and I mean, to his whole family, just uh, uh, you can't even conceive of something like that no. happening and. No, it's just heartbreaking. And him losing his mom back when he was at Virginia Tech and yep. um, just for that whole family. I mean, it's just absolutely crushing. Um, I think, you know, at, at, a, at a moment like this, when you see this young fella going through this, it puts things in, in proper perspective about, you know, he's doing a job and and uh, hopefully when he comes back, he'll be healthy enough to, to get active and produce. But for right now, the most important thing is for him to take care of himself and for him to take care of his family. And very proud of the coaching staff and the players here, the members of the organization, for how they are choosing to support him through all of this as well. Absolutely. And it's a part of the fiber of this team is having that perspective. That's right. And knowing that, yes, this is a job. It's a job we take very seriously. We want to give 120% at every possible time. There are things that are bigger than football. There are things that are more important than your job. And giving him the space and the support and the encouragement to go take care of what he needs to do, take the time that he needs, 
and then come back and we'll figure everything else out. But you focus on your family and taking care of your own right now. That's exactly right. And um, makes you proud of Mike Vrabel mm -hmm. and the culture that he has created and, and back to ownership as well. Yep. Because it is a very genuine sort of thing. I mean, there are, there are a lot of people walking around uh, Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park right now really feeling it for Caleb Farley and his family in this way. Yep. This is – this is a team and organization that's bound together by more than just the game. Right. And you don't get to see that very often. Well, and we haven't seen that every year. No. But, but oh, definitely is, not. But this th is a year where you, you can feel it in the locker room. You can feel that the words they're saying are genuine. You can see it out on the field. Um, you just, you know that there's something binding this team together that's bigger than just a shared career path and it's it, it's awesome to be a part of it's an amazing thing to watch and in moments like this when that's kind of tested it's even better to see these guys kind of show up to support someone who needs it for amy wells i'm mike keith thank you for joining us for the otp